So here's our first question for the evening. It says that we have a cubic graph. Um, okay. Having a y-intercept, da, 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 the x-coordinates of the turning point are minus one and two. Okay, so they've already showed us that on the graph, so we're all good to go. Um, right, 8.1. For which values of x will the graph increase? Okay, so we know that when a graph increases, that would be over here, right? From here up to there. That is where the graph is increasing it means that it's going up so you guys know this by now so i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this so what we can say is that x must be bigger than minus one or smaller than two if you prefer to use interval notation you can say x is an element going from minus one up to two like that okay um, so that's our first question complete 8.2, write down the x coordinates of the point of inflection. All right, so what is an inflection point? An inflection point is this point over, let me choose a different color. The inflection point is this point over here. Okay, so let's make a little note for ourselves that the inflection point is in the middle in the middle of the turning points. It's also the place where the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, but that's not what we're going to use right now. So for two marks, they just want us to use the middle of minus one and two. So we can literally say um, minus one plus two divided by two. And I think that gives us an x value of a half. And they only want the x coordinate. So that will just be a half. We don't know what the x, the y value is, but that's okay. They didn't ask for that. A half. And then over here, we said x must be bigger than minus one and smaller than two. Question 8.3, for which values of x will the graph be concave down? Okay, so let's have a look. Um, we need to find the x values where the graph is concave down. So let me give you a quick summary of what that means. So if you have concave down, and then you can also get concave up. Now, remember, I've made loads of videos where I explain all of this. But for tonight, I'm just going to give you guys a quick little summary of it, okay? So concave down and concave up. So concave down is when your graph looks something like this, okay? Concave up is when your graph looks something like that. Mathematically, concave down is when your second derivative is negative. And concave up is when your second derivative is positive, okay? And where does it change from concave up to concave down? It changes at the inflection point, okay? So can you see over here, it looks more like this one over here. So we will say that that part, part over there is concave up. All of that is concave up. And then if I look after the inflection point, it looks like it's more facing down. Can you see that? So this, this area over here is where we will call it concave down. Where does it change? At the inflection point. That's what an inflection point is. It's the place where it changes from concave down to concave up or concave up to concave down. It doesn't really matter. So they're saying, for which value of x will it be concave down? Well. It's all of the part in blue. So what we can say is that the answer will be everything that is bigger. Let me just write that again. It's when x is bigger than a half, because we know that this x value here is a half. If you prefer to use interval notation, you could say that x must be an element from a half all the way up to infinity. If g of x, is equal to, oh, okay, you guys, you see what they're doing in this question? They've given us the original graph of G over here. And now they're telling us that the first derivative is equal to this. 
Ah, so they're telling us what the first derivative is. And now they want us to determine the equation of G. So they almost want us to go, they want us to be able to go backwards. Now there is a technique in mathematics called integration, which some of you who do AP maths will be very aware of. And this is an area where you could do integration. But for 99% of you learners watching this, as myself, I never did AP maths when I was at school. They never even had AP maths. Um, there's no such thing as integration. So the way that you will do it is the following. You will say that you'll take g of x. Okay, now g of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. Take the first derivative of that. And that's what you'll end up with. Now they've told us that the first derivative is equal to, the first derivative is equal to minus six x squared plus six x plus 12. So all that you do now is you match them up. So you can say that this part must be the same as each other. You can say that this part must be the same as each other. And then this part must be the same as each other. Okay, so I can say that 3a must be the same as minus 6. I can say that 2b is equal to 6. And I can then say that c is equal to 12. So if I solve for a, I would find out that a is equal to negative 2, b is equal to 3, and then c is equal to 12. Okay, very easy, right? So now we have the equation of g. So we can say, therefore, g of x, okay, that's not going to fit in very nicely. We can say that g of x is equal to um, a, which we said was minus 2, b, which we said was 3. Sorry, that's a cube. Minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus. 12. Determine the equation of the tangent that has the maximum gradient. Write your answer in the form. Wow. Okay. So first of all, we know that a tangent is something like this. Um, I'm going to show a few different tangents, maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. Um, where's another one? Where's another one? Maybe there. So we know that a tangent is a place on a graph, or a tangent is a place that only touches the graph in exactly one point. So for example, there, we can see it touches once, there we can see it touches once, and there we can see it touches once. Okay. But they have asked us to find the tangent that has a maximum gradient you need to find the steepest tangent that you can. Now, how the heck are we going to do that? How do we know where the tangent is going to be the steepest? Well, it could possibly be over here. This looks pretty steep. I mean, look how steep that is. Could be there. It could maybe be, this also looks pretty steep. Over there. Um, there's a lot of different places where the gradient is very steep. It could maybe be over here. Now, we don't have to guess where it's going to be. Mathematically, the inflection point, the inflection point is also the place on the graph. So first of all, it's the place where the second derivative equals zero, but it is also the steepest place on a graph. Some of you maybe didn't know that because not, it's not something that they that all teachers are going to mention in class. I don't even mention it that much in, when I'm teaching some people. So it is this because usually we don't really need to know that. It is the steepest place on a graph. Now, if you understand that, then the rest of this question is very easy. So it means that the tangent is going to be over there at the inflection point. So let's quickly draw that and see what that tangent will look like something like that. Now we know that a tangent has the equation y equals to mx plus c. We should also know that the gradient 
of a tangent will always be exactly the same as the gradient on the graph. So the gradient of a tangent is the same as the gradient of a graph. So this means that we need to find the gradient of the graph. Now, how do we find the gradient of a graph? To find the gradient of a graph, we use the first derivative. So remember that your first derivative is another name for gradient. Okay. And so we need to go take the first derivative of this thing down here at the bottom. Sorry, they didn't use f, they're using g, my bad. So we can say that the first derivative is going to be equal to minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12. Okay. So there we have, um, there we have the gradient. Now, to find the gradient at the particular point that we are talking about, we need to remember what the inflection values x point was. Remember, it was a half. We worked that out in one of the earlier questions. So we need to find out what the gradient will be when x is a half. And so if I go type this in on my calculator, I'm just typing it in once more just to make sure, 13.5. So what I can say then, therefore, my gradient of my straight line must also be 13.5. So I can now say that y is equal to 13.5x plus c. Now, to find c, we need to find a point that we can substitute into the straight line. So the best point that we can use is this inflection point. The problem is, we don't know what its y value is. But that is okay, because if you have the x value, then you can always find a y value. So all I do is I take this equation and I go find the y value to the x value of a half. And so I can say that um, g of a half is equal to negative two times a half to the power of three plus three to the power of a half plus 12 times a half. And then I can go fill all of that in on the calculator and work out what that gives me. 6.5. So we have a y value of 6.5. So what that now means is that the coordinates of the inflection point, we knew that the x value was a half. But now we also know that the y value is 6.5 or 13 over 2, if you want to write it like that. So now I can substitute that into this equation in order to find the value of c. And so we can say that 6.5 is equal to 13.5 times by a half plus c. And so if you had to go work out the value of c, we should find that it is equal to negative 0, 0.25, negative 0, 0.25. So therefore, the equation of the tangent is y equals 13.5x minus 0, 0.25.